So, I guess it was announced that I'll be speaking about Rathi Yantra. Yeah. But on Tuesday, today, this week, coming up on Tuesday, is the Snan Yatra, which is the actual uh, birth date of Lord Jagannath. So, um, I think I'll be speaking on Snan Yatra. And at the beginning, and then a little bit about Ratha Yatra after, because it's most appropriate that we hear about the festival coming up on Tuesday. It starts at 5 o'clock in the evening. And so please come, and there's going to be many other activities along with the Snan Yatra. Can we move this podium, Addy, here? Uh, yeah. The podium carriers can come. Okay. Push it over that way, so it's not, not blocking. Yeah. Okay. So we have anybody playing Murdunga here? Okay. What happened? The weather is so warm, nobody's here to say. It's like everybody's in the mountains, huh? The lake, the, the mountains near the lake. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Gopi Janavala Girivara Taha Jaya Gopi Janavala Girivara Taha Gary, the soul and undone, the jan and Hey, 
झमूर फेरा हलवान coming season because around the world especially in in uh, Jagannath Puri at the very end of this month is the official Drathiyatra ceremony and around the world Srila Prabhupada has established the Drathiyatra ceremony in different places even today as we sit here talking today actually it was yesterday New York had their big Drathiyatra thousands of devotees were there three carts and a big festival, Satchinanda Maharaj was there, Kadamba Kana Maharaj was there, Radhana Swami was there, and many others. Big, big festivals. So every week for the rest of this three, four months, there'll be Rathayachas all over, mostly in the Western world. And then the big one in Jagannath Puri is in the very beginning of July. So this is the Lord's special pastimes for to show favor upon the conditioned souls. And um, the Snan Yatra, which prepares one for the Ratha Yatra, is a very special occasion. It's actually the birthday of Lord Jagannath. So when you celebrate his appearance in the world, we actually we celebrate it on the Snan Yatra. So for us, on Tuesday, this week coming, in the evening at five o'clock, there will be a Ratha Yatra ceremony. Oh, I'm sorry, Snan Yatra ceremony. So please come. It's a, it's a very joyful festival, and there'll be other activities also. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of narrate a little bit about the history of the appearance of Lord Jagannath in the world. Of course, Lord Jagannath is eternal. Om Nila Chala Nivesaya Nityaya Paramatmane Balabhadra Subhadram Bya Jagannathaya Te Namaha. This is the Mula Mantra for glorifying Jagannath, Baladeva, and Subhadra Maharani. And their appearance is a very interesting story which led up to their appearance in the world. And it centers around the life of a very powerful king many thousands and thousands of years ago. His name was King Indra Jumna. Indra was a great devotee of the Lord, and he was worshipping the Lord. But then he had a very strong desire that came to his heart, that he wanted to actually worship the Lord in his, in, in his transcendental form. And he was thinking, I have to find that form of the Lord that I want to give my life to and worship. Just around the same time, there was one traveler, he came and he said, there's a very special form of the Lord which is existing not so far from here, but nobody knows where it is, and his name is Nila Madhava. And so the king became even more excited to hear, oh, oh Nila Madhava, I have to find him and bring him here and worship him. So he sent out all his ministers to go in different places around the kingdom to locate Nila Madhava. And after some time, all of them came, except one, came back and says, King, we couldn't, f couldn't find. But one stayed out, his name was v Vidyapati. And Vidyapati decided to go to an area which would be the most, uh, least likely that the Lord would appear. And it was a very remote area of pig farmers, and they were called Sambaras. So, when, so he came to the community of Sambaras and he decided to look around. And as he was walking, he saw the house of one Sambara, so he knocked on the door. And uh, a young girl opened the door 
And uh, that girl was the uh, daughter of the chief of the Sambaras. And so she saw, here's a holy man, he's traveling. So she welcomed him in and he stayed. After some time, uh, the head of the Sambaras, his name was Vishvasu, he came back and then uh, he was there and uh, he saw this saintly person had come. So he welcomed him, said, you can stay here as long as you like. We will serve you nicely. And so a relationship started to develop between Vishvasu and Vidyapati. So much so that v Vishvasu really liked Vidyapati and said, would you marry my daughter? And she was also eager, and Vidyapati agreed. So they, there was a marriage. And now uh, Vidyapati was the son-in-law of Vishvasu, and he was living in the house. But then after some time, he noticed that every evening, Vishvasu would go out in the evening, and he would stay out all night, and then he would come back in the morning, and he would be with garlands on, and he would be fragrant with all kinds of very aromatic scents, and he'd smell very nicely. So he's wondering, where is he going? And so um, he asked his wife, which was the daughter of Vishvasu, where's your father going? And she wasn't supposed to tell, but she did. <laughs> and she said, well, he goes to worship uh, Nila Madhava in the forest. Oh, Nila Madhava. Oh, this is the deity I've been looking for. So he said, well, you have to bring me to him. But she said, well, my father, he doesn't want anyone to know about it. And, but then after some time, Vidyapati developed a desire to go and he asked him, can I come with you to see Nila Madhava? Uh, of course, Vishvasa wasn't so happy about that. He wanted to keep his worship private. So um, he said, all right, just to please his son-in-law and his daughter, so you can come and see the deity, but you have to come blindfolded. You can't see the path that you go, because he didn't want anybody to know how to get to Nila Madhava. He wanted to keep his worship private. So, okay. So he was blindfolded, but his wife, the daughter of Vishvasu, took some mustard seeds and she sewn it into his cloth. And the idea is that he was going to drop the mustard seeds along the path. And that would create these mustard plants they would grow and then he would be able to find the path. So he goes and he, for the first time, he sees this beautiful Krishna deity, Nila Madhava. He's so beautiful and he's in the forest and he's being worshipped near a lake, near a tree. And so he's just like overwhelmed with love and devotion and he's offering it. And then while he's there, he sees there's one crow, just some crows sitting. You know what a crow is, right? It's a bird that makes noise like that. They're, they're black. You see them mostly in garbage heaps. They go around garbage heaps. They're not a very nice bird. <laughs> In fact, they'll attack you sometimes. But there was one crow, he was sitting up in the tree, and he was asleep. And when he was asleep, are you okay? I shouldn't have said crow, maybe that did it. <laughs> you want some water? Somebody get him, get him some water. We have any water here right on hand? No? Anybody? Okay. Yeah. So, there was this, okay, there you go, here's some water. So this crow was sitting up in the tree and it fell asleep. And while it was fell asleep, it fell off the branch and into the lake below. And the crow died. But right after it fell into the lake, the crow came out of the lake in a forearm form, floated upward and went back to the spiritual world. 
So Vidyapati is watching all this. This crow falls off the tree, gets a spiritual body, and goes back to the spiritual world. And he's thinking, wow. So he climbs up the tree, he's going to jump into the lake. He's thinking, this is a, I can go back to Godhead. <laughs> but then he hears a voice, Vishwa, uh, uh, Vidyapati, you, don't you know you're on a mission? You have to tell King Indrajumna about Nila Madhava. Well, then he remembers, so he stops his program. So after some time, he leaves and he goes back to King Indrajumna and he says, I found the deity you're looking for, Nila Madhava. And Indrajumna gets, gets really excited. He starts calling his ministers and some soldiers, and he says, let's go. We will now bring Nila Madhava back here. So, there's an army goes, and of course, Vishwastu is not so happy now. He's losing his private worship of Nila Madhava, and here comes the king. And so he tries to stop, but the king a ta king restrains him, and he's going to punish him, but then he hears a voice, do not punish Visvasu. And so the king lets him go. And he comes, and when he comes to the spot where Vidyapati describes where the, the, the deity of Nilamadav is, Nilamadav is gone. So then he starts blaming Vishwasu. What you do with the deity? Vishwasu didn't do anything. The Lord just disappeared. And so now, what to do? So Vindrajuma is really kind of upset. The deity is gone, and now he can't find the deity. Then he hears a voice. You can worship me, but not in the form that I that you know. But you arrange for a sculptor and they will make a form of me which you can worship. And so he, he and built me a temple also. So the Lord, the Lord speaks to him. So he gets all excited. He goes back and now he He's, and then when he's back, he gets a dream. In the dream, the Lord appears to him and says, I am here. I am on the bank of the river. Please come and get me. And then bring the sculptor and he will carve. So he goes to the bank of the river and he sees this huge log, big. And then he understands this is the deity, this is the wood he has to carve from. So he tries to pick it up, he can't, he calls his soldiers, they can't move it. Nobody can move the log. And he doesn't know what to do, nobody can do it. They tie it to, to elephants, elephants can't pull it, nobody can move the log. It's, uh, the Lord didn't want to be moved. And then the Lord spoke to him again in a dream and said, Bring Vishvasu, bring a chariot, and bring Vidyapati, and put Vidyapati on one side, Vishvasu on the other, and connect the ropes to the chariot, and connect the ropes to me. And so he follows that dream, and easily the, the, the log of wood started to move. So he takes it back, and now he has to find a sculpture to do the work. And he's telling the sculptor, because he gets instructions in the dream, how the Lord wants to look. And so the sculptors, they bring their chisels, and every time they, they start hitting into the wood, their tools break. Every one of them. None of them could carve it. All of their tools just broke as soon as they tried to carve it. So they all gave up. <laughs> And then the Lord had another dream, bring Vishwakarma. <laughs> and Vishwakarma is the architect of the demigods. So somehow or other he calls Vishwakarma, Vishwakarma understands his mission and says to him, I will carve the deity, but under my conditions. 
you put me in a room, close the door, and I will work for 21 days. After 21 days, I will be finished. And if you open the door before those 21 days, you will not see me. <laughs> so he's there and he's working and the king is really excited. He's counting the days. Two weeks are up, 14 days, and now he doesn't hear any more sounds coming from inside. It sounds like the work has stopped. <coughs> so he gets anxious what to do. So the queen tells him, you should go and check. So he opens the door, and when he opens the door, the sculptor is gone, and he sees three apparently unfinished forms. Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra. They were without legs, and they were without arms or hands. And so he's thinking, oh my God, I committed a great offense. The Lord wasn't even fully carved. And then he's about to commit suicide, the king. And then he has another dream. And in the dream, the Lord says, actually, I arranged for you to come in early. This is my form. I want to appear in this form. But if you want to worship me, you can also put golden hands on my body and legs also. And then now build me a temple. So he builds a beautiful temple, takes him many years, and now he's ready to begin the worship. But then he thinks, before I can begin the worship, I have to inaugurate the worship. And who's qualified to inaugurate or have the ceremony? Only Lord Brahma. So he decides to go to Brahma Loka to petition Lord Brahma to come and officiate the worship of the Lord. And so he goes to the, and when he's in Brahma Loka, you know, the time differences. So one moment in Brahma Loka is like hundreds of years on the earth planet. <laughs> so after some time, when he's gone, somehow or other the whole temple got covered with sand and it was buried in the sand. And one king came and he was ruling for a while and then he left and then another king called Gadamadana, he was ruling. And this one, Indraduna comes back and uh, uh, Gadamadana, somehow or other, he got the temple out of the sand and he cleaned it off and then he was going to call it his temple. And Indradum the Maharaj came back and said, no, it's my temple. What do you mean your temple? Who are you? Well, I'm the king who made the temple. No, I'm the one who made the temple. <laughs> so they're fighting over who's, you know, whose temple it is. And then uh, actually Lord Brahma comes and said, it belongs to King Indradumna. And so Brahma comes. And then, so... Uh, King Gadamadana, he, he realized he was cheating, and so he didn't continue his program. And then Indradumna Maharaj said to uh, Lord Brahma, can you do the worship? He said, no. <laughs> this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Only he can arrange for this. I cannot do it. <laughs> so now he's thinking what to do. And so he... Uh, uh, he's thinking, and so somehow or other he calls some priests, in other words, and, and the Lord appeared again in a dream and said, yes, the king can carry on. And so there was an inauguration, and the worship began of Lord Jagannath, Baladeva, and Subhadra. And that was what we call the Snan Yatra Day. On that day we actually bathed the deities <coughs> in yogurt, and and um, water, water and yogurt mostly. Milk too, I think. Yeah. But somebody, it happens every year. We can't figure out who does it. Somebody leaves the window open, and the Lord gets sick. And after the, his bathing ceremony for his birth, he gets sick on his birthday, isn't that? 
I mean, if you had a birthday and somebody was, was honoring you on your birthday and you got sick, you'd think, oh, my birthday's been a failure. <laughs> so this happens every year. Jagannath gets sick on his birthday and he goes into seclusion for two weeks. And this is called Anavatsara. And so this Anavatsara, Lord Jagannath is. He's, uh, no one can see him. He's wrapped in cloth because he's got a fever and he's sick and he gets special teas and special herbal remedies. And uh, in Jagannath Puri, when they perform this ceremony, they give a, a, only a, a midnight darshan of the deity. Only those who come at midnight can see the deity. But usually he's in seclusion. Hardly anyone sees him. So one time... When we were in Jagannath Puri, I'm just going back to an experience I had. We were there in the year 2001 for the Rathiatra Festival. And uh, there was one doctor, and he was with us. He was uh, a worshiper of Sita Ram. And his name was Sita Ram Das. <laughs> and he was a really devout worshiper of Sita and Ram. So he joined our Yatra. We had about 4,000 devotees that year. We came for the Ratiyatra ceremony out of India. And uh, so he decides to go for the midnight darshan. So he told us about this later. So when he was in there, he's looking at Dar Jagannath. And the priest comes off up to him and starts talking to him. And then, you know, he finds out, well, he's a doctor. And uh, so he uh, says, oh, you're a doctor? Well, Jagannath got a fever. Go check him and see how he is. <laughs> so the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, doctor, Sita Ram, he goes over there and he puts his hand on Jagannath's arm. And, then, and the priest says, no, no, put your hand on his chest. And so he does, and he has to pull it away real fast because Jagannath's chest is hot. He's got a fever. And he's not even a devotee of Jagannath. He just came to find out more. And he came out of the temple the next day and he was telling us, he said, I can't believe it. Jagannath's more merciful than Sita Ram. <laughs> he had a fever. He had a real fever. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> of course, when the Lord wants to perform his pastime, he really performs his pastimes. So, um, and so, the Lord, so that Anavatsara is two weeks, and after two weeks is up, then the Rathayatra ceremony. In. So what is the meaning of Rathayatra? Rathayatra is very deep in spiritual teachings. When Krishna was in Vrindavan, he, Akura, came when Krishna was about ten and a half years old. And he asked Krishna, well, you know, there was so many problems in Mathura. And Kamsa's, you know, harassing everyone. So come and kill Kamsa. So Krishna agrees. And Akura takes Krishna out of Vrindavan. Of course, that's a whole story how when he was trying to bring Krishna out of, out of Vrindavan, the gopis didn't want Krishna to go. So they were laying in front of the chariot, and they were calling Akrura's na names. They, were, they said, you are Akrura, but you're not Akrura, you're Kura. Because Akrura means one who is kind, and Kura means one who is cruel. <laughs> so they were calling him Kura instead of Akrura. <laughs> So, but still, the Lord wanted to, to leave, so he used the Krura to bring him out and, and took him to Mathura. And when he was there, he killed the elephant. And he defeated the wrestlers, and he uh, defeated the brahmanas, and then he killed Kamsa. But while he was there, there were many other demons that were also attacking Mathura, so Krishna had to stay there. So Krishna stayed there for for many, many years protecting Mathura because many of Kamsa's allies were attacking 
the new king, who was King Urgesena, which was the the father of of um, Kamsa, he was ruling the throne, but he was actually a pious person. So then, of course, when Krishna stayed away, there were so many other demons. So Krishna stayed away for a long time. In fact, he stayed away for almost a hundred years. And the residents of Vrindavan were feeling intense separation from Krishna. And Krishna was also feeling intense separation from the residents of Vrindavan. So one time, when mm, there was danger to the devotees of Krishna, who were living outside of Vrindavan, Krishna built the Dwarka. It's a famous island, and it's no longer there anymore. It's called the Dwarka Fort. It sank into the ocean. You can still, they still find remnants of Dwarka there. And uh, that was Krishna's abode. That's where he had 16,000 palaces with 16,000 queens living in these palaces. Dwarka was a very opulent city. So Krishna was there, and he was Dwarkadish. He was the king of Dwarka. And he was living in, in, as a royal king, and at the same time, occasionally killing the demons in the area. But the residents of Vrindavan were always feeling separation from Krishna. And Krishna, at the same time, was always wanting to go back to Vrindavan. And every time he would send messages that I'm coming, but there's a few more demons that I have to get rid of. <laughs> there's still Shishupal, there's still Shalva, there's still, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's that powerful demon? Janat Jarasanda, all these demons. So Krishna stayed away because his mission was pravitranayam sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam, to kill the demons. And so, but Krishna wanted to go back to Vrindavan and be with his devotees, and the devotees wanted him to come back. And Krishna, when he would go to sleep at night, when he was living in Vrindavan, he would just, he would say, Gopi, 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 Radhe, 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 Yasoda, Yasoda, Yasoda. He would speak in his sleep. <laughs> and the queens would hear, oh, Krishna is always chanting the names of the, his residents of Vrindavan. And he's with us, but he seems like he wants to be with them. <laughs> so they must be better than we are. So they were hearing it regularly. And Krishna was feeling the need to go back, but he couldn't because he had more work to do. His, his 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 duty was more important than his pleasure, <laughs> but still his pleasure was to be with the devotees of his devotees in Vrindavan, especially the gopis. And so, one day, the queen, some of the head queens, they came to Rohini, because Rohini was the mother of Balaram. And Rohini was living in Vrindavan when Krishna was growing up, she was like his second mother. There was Yasoda and Rohini, both taking care of Krishna and Balaram. They were like two mothers with two sons. And each of the sons saw each of the mothers as their own mother, so Rohini was very close to Krishna. And she was there, she saw all of the pastimes. And so the, the queen said to Rohini, Rohini, can you tell us what it was like with Krishna growing up in Vrindavan? And Rohini said, Oh, if I start talking about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, and if he finds out, he's going to leave. <laughs> he's going to go back. You're not going to have him. But they said, well, we have to hear it. He's always just calling out the names of the gopis and all his friends all right, let's have a secret meeting. And we'll, we'll, we'll just bring some of the important queens and we'll have a secret meeting in this one place. So that was the idea. They wanted to hear about Krishna's leelas in Vrindavan. So they decided to get together and then they were thinking, we need a guard to guard the door. Who can we get? Subhadra. Oh, Subhadra's a good guard. Okay. So they asked Subhadra, you stand with Gaur, and if Krishna comes, you tell us, and then we'll stop. Okay. So Rohini starts to narrate Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. I think some of you are feeling the mood for Nidra Yoga here. 
<laughs> you don't think the speaker can see? We can see everything. <laughs> And so, yeah, you're thinking, he's not looking at me. <laughs> I'll go to sleep. <laughs> That's okay. My classes are can have has multi purposes, you know. <laughs> you're missing some sleep. And here's the best time, <laughs> just before Prashad. And so Rohini, she's narrating all of these pastimes. And uh, Subhadra's also, she's guarding the door, but she's listening. And she's getting ecstatic, just listening. And she gets so ecstatic, she faints. And her arms go in her body and her legs also. And she's lying there. And now nobody's guarding the door. And nobody's noticing what happened to Subhadra because they just absorbed in hearing from Rohini. Mataji, are you pressing me for time? Not yet. <laughs> you sure look like it. <laughs> you don't think the speaker knows what's going on? <laughs> he knows everything. <laughs> That's, when I get off the Vyasa sun, I don't know anything. But when I'm on here, I know everything. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I, I think I'm supposed to go to f quarter to five, right? Four thirty? But the class started 15 minutes late today. <laughs> don't you remember? <laughs> okay, we're getting to the end, okay. And uh, and uh, so now nobody's guarding the door. And then Balaram comes and he says, Oh, my mother, she's speaking. Let me hear what she's saying. And then he comes, he sees Subhadra laying there. What happened to Subhadra? She looks like she's like she's listening to Chandramali Swami's class. <laughs> she fell asleep. <laughs> and uh, so, and Balaram starts listening and he's listening and he's, oh, he's getting ecstatic. His eyes get and his arms, legs go and he faints. And Balaram's down now. <laughs> and then somehow or other, Krishna says, something's going on here, let me find out. <laughs> so he goes, oh, yeah, my mother, she's talking. Oh, what happened to Balaram? <laughs> I guess he was tired. <laughs> he was he was out on Harinam Sankirtan, and Marka was ch taking too long to go back, so he got tired. <laughs> So you want to, you know, you have to put a little of the local stuff into it. <laughs> so yeah, so Krishna is listening, and his eyes go. You saw Jagannath's eyes. When you see those eyes, if you look, if you're in like really absorbed in devotion, when you're funny, you'll see those eyes will get big right in front of you. They get, you've seen that, right? The eyes, they'll move and they'll get big. Because he's looking at you and he's thinking, wow, that's a nice devotee. Now let me see more. <laughs> yeah, that's his ecstasy. So then, Krishna faints. And his eyes, arms, legs. Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. And then, that form of the Lord, where the Lord appears to be unfinished with no arms and legs, is an ecstatic manifestation of Krishna in the mood of separation from Vrindavan. It's the highest form of Krishna's love for his devotees. It's called Vipralamba Bhav, 
or and that's the mean the meaning of Rathayatra is that the Lord is leaving Dwarka, which is his temple in, in Jagannath Puri, and he's going to the Gundicha temple, which is two point three kilometers down Grand Road. And the Gundicha temple symbolizes Vrindavan. So the meaning of Rathayatra is taking the Lord from Dwarka to Vrindavan. And the Lord is ecstatic. And Balaram's cart goes first, Jagannath and uh, Subhadra second, and Jagannath's cart's third. We don't have much more time, but I could tell you about some of the experiences we had when we were in Jagannath Puri in 2001 and in 2006, and again in 2014, each time for the Ratha Yatra. It's amazing stories. If you get a chance, before you leave this world, go to Jagannath Ratha Yatra in Puri during the festival. There's more than a million people there. More than a million. All cramped in one road. <laughs> It becomes amazing, and so there's so many beautiful stories. We had we had so many mystical experiences. We were there during that time because Jagannath is so personal. He's very very personal, and um, his love for his devotees is his form. His form is that he is uh, wanting to again associate with his devotees, and the whole Rathayatra festival means to take Krishna back from Dwarka to Vrindavan. And those who take part in that festival are doing one of the highest services because the Lord has a strong desire to again revisit Vrindavan and be with his eternal associates, his mother, Yasoda, Nanda Maharaj, Radharani and all the gopis and his friends. So anyone who assists in taking part of the Jagannath Ratha Yantra will get special, special, special mercy from the Lord. It's a very wonderful ceremony. And we chant and dance in front of the carts. And uh, that chanting and dancing is the enthusiasm of the, of the devotees to bring the Lord back. When we were there in the year 2001, um, the rule is that um, the rule is that uh, the carts have to go from the temple to Kundicha temple, and they start early in the morning. Of course, there's so many ceremonies. The actual festival starts. Have you been there to Jagannath Puri for Rathayatra? A few times, huh? Yeah, it's amazing festival. Were you there in 2001 or six? Not those years? Before that. 89. 92, 92, 4 and 8. Five times, four times. Nice. And uh, the rule is that Jagannath has to get to the Gundicha temple that day. But he only travels when the sun is up. So if the, if the carts take too long, and many times they do, where when the sun goes down, the cart stops there. And there's no more movement until the next day. And then they continue the Ratha Yantra when the sun comes up. So when we were there, we had 4,000 devotees, and we were, we were in front of Jagannath's cart, and we were having powerful kirtans. And the announcers were saying, wow, it looks like Lord Chaitanya and all of his devotees have returned to Jagannath Puri. Because Jagannath was so happy to see the devotees doing kirtan that the cart didn't move. <laughs> Usually every year the cart actually gets to its destination on the first day, but that day it only went halfway. And there's so many wonderful stories that happened during that. But I see my uh, uh, my organizer there, she's getting a little upset that I'm still going. <laughs> you have time? 
Can I tell you a story? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a nice story. This is this was a personal story. I was there with Radha Swami and all the devotees from Chalpati. So when they were putting the deities onto the cart, now Jagannath's cart weighs 40 tons. You know how much a ton is? It's 2,000 pounds, 2,000.2.2 thousand pounds. I don't know if you know a pound is. How much is a pound in... Hmm? 0 0.45, so, okay. What do you, you weigh things in what? In tons. In tons, also? Yeah. So, Jagannath's car is 40 tons, Balaram's car is 60 tons, and Subhadra's car is 35 tons. The carts are up high, and to get the deities onto the cart, you have to go up a plank, and there's a plank that's constructed with logs. The logs are like stairs. And then they put a sheet of wood, and then they put, so that's how they get the deities up on the cart. And it takes 20, 20 strong men. The deity is two meters high and one meter wide. That's how big Jagannath is. He's big. <laughs> and so they're trying to carry him up on the cart. Uh, can you sit up straight? It would be really nice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You actually feel more comfortable when you sit straight. <laughs> uh, and then, so we were watching, and there's a big ceremony. It starts about 8 in the morning, and then they have drummers, they have cartel players, they have fire twirlers, and it's all for the entertainment of the Lord as he comes out of the temple onto the cart. So this goes on, so it starts about 8 o'clock in the morning, and about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the deities are finally on the cart. It takes about four or five hours. It's a big ceremony. And you see all of this entertainment going on. So we were there right next to the carts. We had a special pr place because we knew some of the pandas in the temple. So now they got to get Jagannath on the cart. Baladev's Bala up, Subhadra's there, now Jagannath. So they're trying to bring him up the plank. So these 20 men, they got him with ropes and they're trying to, really trying to pull him up there. And Jagannath's not going. <laughs> He's just not going. <laughs> so they move him up a little bit. I was watching this and he was, then he would go back down again. And they would get him up and they would struggle and then <laughs> Now all this is being announced on on the air and is covered like all over the world in different languages. So the person who's announcing he's speaking in Orian language, which is the local language. So later on we found out what happened because he's narrating what happens and he sees that the pandas can't get Jagannath up. And he knows they can do it, but Jagannath's just not cooperating. He's not gonna go up. So the announcer gets on the, on the microphone, he says, Jagannath! Jagannath! Your devotees are waiting! No time to go to sleep! Get on the cart! Get on the cart! He's like really chastising Jagannath. And then all of a sudden, Jagannath actually took a position of laying down too. So he wasn't going to, and all of a sudden, we, I watched it, I, figured, I couldn't figure out what was happening. Jagannath went, shing, mm, went right up. <laughs> and we, we, said, we said to the pundas later, how'd you do that? He said, we didn't do anything. <laughs> he decided to go, so he went. <laughs> so that's Jagannath. <laughs> Very personal. So during that Rathayatra ceremony, Baladev's cart goes first, and Subhadra's cart. And, and Baladev's, he's, and he, the carts don't have any steering. There's no steering, and there's no, um, no brakes. Yeah. <laughs> so they have these long, big ropes. The ropes are about this fat. You've been to the one. Right? <laughs> They're about this fat. And people are pulling the cart. That's how it moves. And on, the, on each cart, there's about 100 men sitting on the cart along with the deity. Because <laughs> so they want to ride with the deity. These are special people. They get up on the cart. You know. So Baladev's going, cart's going first. And he's leading the way. 
And then he decides to decide to go off to the side. Now the police are conducting the whole thing. They have two kinds of police, special police and the regular police. Now the police are, are, are telling people, pull this way, pull this way, you know, bring him back to the middle. Baladay's not listening. He's just going over. And he just keeps going off to the side and he comes right up against a telephone pole, electrical pole, and the cart stops there. You can't push it back, and nobody's going to get off it. <laughs> They're not going to get off. Nobody can push it back. So they're thinking, what to do? So somebody got the idea, let's take the pole out of the ground. <laughs> so the men came with the shovels, and then somebody climbed up the pole and hooked the wires on the top, and they pulled the whole pole out of the ground. <laughs> and then the cart was free, and then they went. And then Baladev, he's, he's moving along. And then he decides to do it again. <laughs> this time, day later, almost at the end of the whole festival, or the whole route, he, he starts going off to the side again. Now, along the side, people set up their little shops, and they have all their stuff they sell for the till, you know, souvenirs and all kinds of stuff that they sell. And um, the shops are just put together on that day. They, they get some tin, they get some wood, they get some cardboard, and they make a shop. <laughs> and then so Baladev's cart goes up against this man's shop and stops. <laughs> what to do? And so the police said, we have to take your shop down. <laughs> the man said, wow, thank you. It was like he was so happy. That was the report we got later that he was so happy. I get all from my shop to, to the Lord, you know. So when you go to that festival, you'll see the most amazing, mo most amazing experiences there. It's so mystical during that Rathayatra festival. And Srila Prabhupada became famous by taking Lord Jagannath and bringing him all over the world. So for those of you who are aware, on the 25th of this month, there is the Rathayatra ceremony in Rieka. And the 25th is the Rathiatra and the Rieka, and then I think Zagreb is doing a Rathiatra also soon. It'd be nice if the devotees here could do a Rathiatra one year. I think you have all of the, the manpower is here with them. All you have to do is organize it. And I think people would really love it to see Lord Jagannath coming down, you know, the city square there, <laughs> or somewhere in Ljubljana town, and then you'll have Jagannath of Ljubljana. <laughs> yeah, it'll be really wonderful to have Lord Jagannath here too. So, um, yeah, this is the season, so Snanyatra is going on around the world, and Jagannath Puri will be doing their big Rathayatra very soon, and Srila Prabhupada's devotees all around the world will be doing it. So there's many more stories, but I think I should stop here because I think start things will be flying at me. Pots, pans, and cushions, and other things, huh? Tomatoes. tomatoes yeah, yeah. If you if you're going to throw tomatoes, throw the good ones because we can use them for pizza. <laughs> Only quality tomatoes, nothing less. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. So come on Tuesday night. We have a special surprise, which I'm not going to tell. <laughs> so if you come Tuesday night, you'll find out what that surprise is, along with this wonderful opportunity to see the Lord, bathe the Lord, and be there on his appearance day. It's not natural. So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. <laughs>